Praise God. As you remain standing, we shall return to God's Word. Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will speak into our lives. Release grace and anointing in this place that will make the proclamation of God's word effective. In Jesus' name, we bind every resistance to the preaching and the proclamation of God's word. We speak liberty. We speak freedom. We speak deliverance. We speak joy in the house of God. May Christ be exalted in this hour. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Today's message is titled, Finding God in the Storm. Finding God in the Storm. Praise God. Have you ever gone through a storm, a season of storm in your life? We all are familiar with storms. While we are familiar with the physical storms that can come during the season of storms. I think those of us who live in the Northeast, we are familiar with the storm which was dubbed as Sandy. I think we all got a partial brunt of Sandy. Sandy, I believe, was as wide was was as wide as 500 miles, and we just got a tip of it, a tip of it, and we knew we know the misery that we had to go through when Sandy passed by us. All of us go through storms in our lives. But I want to draw our attention not just to the physical storms that we encounter in our lives. But there are storms, real life storms, that we encounter in our lives. There are storms of oppressions. There are storms that are initiated because of our disobedience. There are storms that are initiated because of our obedience. There are storms that are initiated by God himself. And then there are storms which are initiated by Satan himself. All these things we have referenced in the scripture, but we don't take time this morning to draw our attention to it. When you take into consideration the life of Ezekiel, we will understand that Ezekiel also had gone through a stormy season in his life. He was a captive who was brought from Jerusalem. He was an exile in Babylon. And as he was seated, as he was by the river Kebar, as the Bible says, uh, there was a divine encounter in his life. Looking back, Everything that he called precious, everything that he called important, everything that he called treasured was stripped away from his life. Because of the Babylonian invasion that took place, uh, their dignity was stripped, their identity was stripped, their homeland was stripped. Their worship was stripped. Their temple was stripped. Everything that they held fast to to their lives as precious was stripped away from them. They were taken out of their homeland and they were placed in a foreign land, in a place where everything from culture to language to 
food, to dress, to diet. Everything was different. And a true Israelite would have an agony that would go through in their heart because of they could not relate to where they were. They were missing their homeland. And I'm sure that Ezekiel, like all the other captives, were experiencing the same kind of agony. As time went by, many of them realized that it was better for them to settle down. Some thought that they will assimilate as the Babylonians were trying hard to make sure that they assimilated with their culture by stripping them of their dignity and their identity. But the ones that held fast to the promise, held fast to the promises of God's word, held fast to the word of God, held fast to the mercies of God, they held fast to what was precious, hoping and praying that there will be a deliverance. And Ezekiel was one of them. And the Bible tells us that he was from a priestly home. He was a priest and he was seated by the river Kebar. Praise God. Gone through a stormy season in his life. He was not only passed through a stormy season in life, he was living in that memory. Have you ever been through a stormy season in your life? When a loved one's are taken away from us, we feel that we are in a crisis mode. But the grace of God and the peace of God that is made available for us help us to overcome. And God instills within us peace and hope with the assurance that we would see our loved ones who are departed away from us. But then there are agonies and crises that we continue to live in. And sometimes it is hard to overcome the agony and the crisis that we are living through day after day. It comes in various forms. It comes in various shades. It comes in different sizes. And unless we have the grace of God, and unless we know how to hold fast to the word of God, those crises, those calamities in our life have a way of drowning our hopes and of, 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 of everything that we hold as precious. Can you identify with some of the crises and the calamities that you face in your lives? Sometimes crisis comes in the form of financial crisis. At times, it comes in the form of relational and emotional crisis. It can come in the form of a spouse uh, who's not faithful. It can come in the form of a child who is rebellious. It can come in the form uh, of a boss or an employer who is evil. It can come in the form as a fellow brethren who is double crossing you. It can come in the form of a neighbor who continues to nag you. It can come in the form of a fellow worker who is constantly being a pain and irksome in your life. Sometimes we have to live through crisis and agony in our lives. At times when our prayers are not answered in a timely manner, we all come to a place where we tend to ask questions to ourselves. When you go through that season of crisis in your lives, when you go through that season of storms in your life, don't you hear voices whispering in your ear asking you, where is your God? What about your faith? Where is your promises? How come this is happening to you? How come that you have served God faithfully and you're going through this season? Have you gone through such stormy experiences in your life. Praise God. We all go through such stormy experiences in our lives. Ezekiel went through such a stormy experience in his life. But as he waited, as he was by the river Ke Kebar, the Bible says the heaven opened for him. Praise God. Bible scholars say when you study the entire book of Ezekiel, they said that this was a particular place where he and the captives 
would pray and intercede. Either way, praise God for a man of God who trusts in God, for a man of God who hopes in God, for a man of God who holds fast to the promises of God. Heaven will surely open for them. When you read the scripture, you find in scripture there are various places where heavens were open for the men and women of God. The Bible says in the gospel of Matthew, when Jesus was baptized, heaven was open. Praise God. When a man of God, when every child of God is obedient to the word of God, heaven opens for them. Baptism stands for a symbol of obedience to to the Lord. It also stands for dying to self and living for Jesus. When we die to self and when we live for Jesus, heaven will open on our behalf. Then we see in Acts that as Stephen was being persecuted, as stones were being pelted at him, heavens opened for Stephen and he looked up and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. He saw a vision of a Savior who was standing on him for him on his behalf hallelujah we see that peter was on the rooftop praying and as he was praying the bible says that heaven opened and there was a new beginning a new understanding a new revelation a new insight a new direction a new path that was cut for Peter as he waited upon the Lord. We see that John was in the Isle of Patmos, was being persecuted. He was sent away because of the word and the testimony of Jesus. And he being all by himself, lonely in the Isle of Patmos, the heavens opened for him. Folks, when you and I are in a crisis mode, when you and I are willing to heed to the word of God, when you and I are willing to take a stand for Jesus, when you and I are willing to pay the price, heaven opens for you. Praise God. The book of Malachi says, praise God, you can initiate you can do something that can make the heavens open for you. God speaking to Malachi says, bring your tithes and your offerings into the house of God. Would I not open the shutters of heaven? Would I not open the doors of heaven and pour out an abundance of blessing upon your life? I want to tell you, you have the capability, you have the potential to make sure that that heaven is opened on your behalf and blessings flows down into your life when you abide and align yourself with the word of God. Hallelujah. Heaven will open for you and blessings starts coming down for you. Praise the God. Hallelujah. Yes. It requires an open heart to have an open hand. When you have an open heart, you have an open heart hand. And when your hand is opened, the heaven opens for you. Praise God. So if you want the heavens to be opened on your behalf, and if you want heaven to pour out abundance of blessing upon you, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Open our hearts and open our hands. If my heart is closed and if my hands are clenched, I want to tell you heaven is going to be shut and the blessing that you can evoke, that you can evoke is withheld because you don't want to open your heart and you don't want to open your hands. Your open heart and your open hand is the key that can unlock the shutters of heaven and bring forth blessings upon your life. I want to remind you, if there is anybody in this house who is going through a crisis mode, you are going through a financial crisis, I want to give you the key that will bring forth liberty in your financial realm. The key is in your heart. The key is in your hands. You open your heart. You open your hands. And the Bible says, God says, test me on this. 
through me on this, would I not open the shutters of heaven and pour out an abundance of blessing upon you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we are doing fundraising in the church. And our fundraising teams are, are calling upon people. And last week I had an opportunity to go to one of our homes. And we called up, I called up, and when I called up, they said that, oh, Pastor, don't, please don't bring the fundraising team uh, to, to the house. So I was a little, you know, I was not all that, you know, uh, when you say don't come, you know. Uh, so I said, okay, but then they said, well, you know, if you want, you can come. You can bring along Jasmine to come. So I'm saying, okay, you don't want my team to come, but you want me and Jasmine to come, you know. Uh, but I said, okay, I'll go. Because, you know, you're doing it for, it's not for me. We're going for doing it for the, for the church. So we decided we'll go. We went. Well, we went, and we realized once we reached there, we realized why they said they didn't want the team to come. It was a 10 by 30 place that they lived in. They had two chairs. And so they gave one to me and one to Jasmine to sit. So that's when I scratched my head and realized, wow, you know, this is the reason that they said they didn't want the whole team to come because if the whole team came, they would have no place place to sit, let alone stand. Well, when we sat there and we, we discussed things and they knew why we had come and they gave us a fat offering. Hello? Huh? We got 10K from that home. And I was like, wow. Wow. And as we were stepping out, they said, Pastor, we want you to know that, you know, we got this big raise the other day. And I looked back and said, how in the world you will not get a raise? It's a surprise. I'll be surprised if you will not get a raise. Praise God. Because an open heart and an open hand unlock the doors of heaven for a man. Praise God. See, the blessing that we have, the resources that we have, is all from the Lord. Praise God. And we can, by ourselves, we can evoke the heaven's door to be open for us. Praise God. At times, God is merciful. You know what he does? He sends people our way, knocking at our doors, knocking at the doors of our heart, telling you, I want to bless you. I want to open the heaven's door and I want to unload a bundle of blessing upon your life. I know you have kept it closed. I know your hands have been clutched. But here I'm knocking at the door. I'm making men and women call upon you. You open the door of your heart. You open your hands wide. And the Lord says, open your mouth wide. And I will fill it, say the Lord. I will open the shutters of heaven pour out blessing upon you. <laughs> Praise God. During the course of the weeks, you're going to get calls. Remember, is the Lord knocking at your doors? He wants to change your status. Praise God. He wants to change your status. If you've been robbing of God, let me tell you, no matter how much you rob of God, let me tell you, somewhere down the road, he's going to get you. When he gets you, you cannot get out of it. So as a brother in the Lord, I want to see you bless and experience the Lord's blessing upon you. Have a heart that is open and a hand that is open that will evoke the blessings of God upon your life. Praise God. I had another mother share her testimony. A mother is seated here. I'm not talking about my mother. Praise God. One of the mothers in this church, the other day, I was at their home, and she was saying, Pastor, 
I want to tell you, my kids are all educated well. I put them through the best schools. And it was not because we had a lot of money. She said, it's because we have cultivated this habit of giving to the Lord's work. And as we continue to give to the Lord's work, giving more than what is our fair share, we always found that every time there was a need in our lives where we had to take care of what was absolutely necessary, when it came to the education of our children, the Lord would miraculously open a source for us that our needs were always met. Wow, I sat there and I said, praise God, hallelujah, for such real, authentic testimony that is part of this church. Look around. There are brothers and sisters who have experienced the abundance of God's favor that came their way because they had a heart which was open and a hands which were open. Praise God. Let's move on. We see that we see Ezekiel was by that river when the heavens opened and he had a vision. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to him. Praise God. Who does the word of the Lord come to? A heart that is prepared. A heart that is positioned. A heart that is ready. And ears that are sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Praise God, the word of the Lord comes. When the word of the Lord comes, what does the word do? The word establishes us. The word equips us. The word enriches us. Praise God. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. Hallelujah. The scripture talks about the word that has come over the course of the time into the lives of many who had ears that were open to his word. We read about, about John the Baptist. This is what the word of God says. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was the governor, when Herod, Lysinus, and Philip was the tetrachs of the regions that was assigned to them, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the Bible says the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Mind you, the word of God did not go to the emperor's palace. The word of God did not go to the governor's mansion. The word of God did not go to the religious elite. The word of God bypassed the mansion. The, by the word of God bypassed the palace. The word of God bypassed the religious centers. And the word of God went into the wilderness to a man who was prepared, to a man who was ready, to a man who was groomed, to a man who was mentored, to a man who was set apart, to a man who was separated unto God, to a man who was waiting to hear the voice of God. The word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It came to John, it came to Ezekiel, praise God. The word of God came expressly, expressly to Ezekiel, the priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him. The empowering hand, the energizing hand came upon him because the Lord was getting ready to, hallelujah, commission this young man to venture into a lifelong commitment, a lifelong service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know, being a child of God, you are in a lifelong service to the Lord? Amen. Praise God. Yes, God does commission people for unique things, for unique positions, for unique projects, for unique missions. But every child of God, praise God, you have been given for a lifelong service. The Lord wants you 
to be in a lifelong service. He has called you out of darkness into marvelous light to declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into light. Hallelujah. Praise God. As he stands by the river, he sees, what does he see? The Bible says in verse 4, what is it? Then I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud, raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, and radiating out of its mist like the color of amber out of the mist of the fire. What is the last thing that you want to see when you are going through a stormy season in your life? Tell me. Fire? Ezekiel sees what? He sees a whirlwind. With great clouds. The last thing that you want to see. When you are going through a stormy season in your life is. Under the storm that is brewing and that's coming. But that's what Ezekiel. Who saw the heavens open. Who heard the word of God. Who had the hand of God come upon him. The whirlwind that was coming from the north, it had its own implication, implications. But I want to draw, take your attention to one part of it. As he looked closely into that storm that was brewing and that was coming, he could see fire in it. He could see engulfing fire, engulfing fire in it. He could see flashes. He could see lightning. And then as you read that entire chapter, we realize that what he saw was the glory of God that was being shown as he looked intently. Ezekiel tries to record everything that he is seeing in this particular vision. He jots it down. And if we see, as the Bible says, he see a throw. He see four fours. He see four living creatures. He see four faces. He sees four wings. And all those things are recorded there. But I want to draw your attention to something else. He see the awesome glory of God. And storms always symbolized divine judgment that was to come. And there was judgment coming from the north. It was going to come upon Jerusalem. But as, as he looked internally into the storm, into this whirlwind, he saw the glory of God. And he describes it. And you can see the attributes of God in there. You can see the omnipotent God in there. You will see the omniscient God in there. You will see the omnipresent God in there. He sees the four wheels. Reminding that God is not just impassive. But God is active involved and that God is close to us that even as he stands by the river Kebar and going through agony in his soul the presence of God with all of its glory was rolling down and coming by its side and I want to remind you if you're a child of God and you're going through a season of crisis and pain in your life I want to remind you that the God that you serve is not a God who is far and distant but he comes by your side and he visits you where you are praise God 
Yes, Ezekiel. Is it this not the disobedience of the people of God? Is it not the rebellion of the people of God that has placed you by the river Kebar? Yes, it is. But God has a word for a man who is standing for him, for a man whose heart is tuned for him, for a man who was in agony. He wanted to hear from God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 28. I want somebody to read verse 28. Hmm. Amen. That's good. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. Praise God. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. Praise God. As Ezekiel looked into this whirlwind, he saw the glory of God, the power of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God. Praise God, the fire burning. It all resembled, it showed a picture of the holiness, awesomeness of a great and an awesome God. And as he looked intently, he saw something else. He saw a rainbow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, when you study the Bible, we understand that the rainbow was given as a pledge between man and God, that God will never again destroy the earth with a flood. Do you know what takes, how does a rain, how is a rainbow formed? When there is rain and sunshine together, a mixture of the storm and sunshine together, we see the rainbow. And in the Bible, the rainbow is an emblem of God's grace and glory throughout the scripture. When you're coming out of a storm, when you are in a storm, the sun, not S-U-N, the S-O-N, the sun breaks out for you, bringing in hope, grace into your broken lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. What does... Ezekiel see, he sees the glory of God. And he sees the grace of God going hand in hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the Bible, when you look at the Bible, there are three people in the Bible who saw the rainbow. The first one was, of course, who? Noah. Who was the second one? Ezekiel. And the third one, John. And this was in three different occasions. When Noah saw the rainbow, it was after the storm. When Ezekiel saw the rainbow, it was in the midst of a storm. When John sees the rainbow in Revelation, it is before the storm. Praise God. When you go through a stormy season in life, for a child of God, God will show you the emblem of grace. Maybe you have to go through a storm. And after the storm, he will show you the emblem of grace. Maybe in the midst of the storm, he will show you the emblem of his grace. Maybe way before the storm, like John the Revelator sees it, he will show you the emblem of grace, the rainbow, before the storm. Praise God. But I want to tell you, regardless of what season you are in, if you are a child of God, the Lord shows this rainbow, the emblem of grace, to give you the assurance that he will see you through, that he will never leave you, nor would he ever forsake you. Praise God. It's important to note that 
as, as we read the first chapter of Ezekiel. These two things are mentioned here. Number one, the glory of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God, the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, the mighty power of God is displayed in that vision. And it's not that that's not the only thing that is displayed. We see through the rainbow, the grace of God is displayed. It is very important as children of God for us to understand who our God is. Unless we have a revelation about the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God, we will not come to a place of total surrender and reverence and homage and worship to a God who is worthy to be adored and worshipped. Many a times, Christians tend to forget how great and awesome their God is. They think that God is their buddy. They call God as a man upstairs. I had a co-worker who used to refer to Jesus Christ as J.C. I used to share the gospel with him, and every time I used to share the gospel with him, he used to refer to J.C., J.C., and in the, in the beginning, I didn't understand what in the world he was talking about. I asked him, who is J.C.? He just looked at me and said, that's Jesus Christ. I said, you call Jesus Christ J.C.? Show some respect. The Bible says his name is above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth should bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. That, that the strongholds, that demons feel, the, the hell, it shakes in fear when the name of Jesus is uttered and you dare to call him J.C. How casual. We take the name of Jesus. Because we don't tend to see the glory of him. You read Ezekiel's vision. You read John the Revelator's vision about Jesus Christ and how Jesus has been expressed and, and described there. And you will too, you, that will bring you to a place of, of, of surrender and you will kneel down before Jesus. You see the excellency. The supremacy, the majesty and the glory of God revealed in that first chapter. Praise God. We need that to give him the rough reverence to come down and kneel down before him. But then at the same time, the Bible shows us the rainbow in the throne showing the emblem of grace which allows access for you and me. Praise God. The writer of Hebrews says, therefore come with confidence to where? To the throne of grace. Praise God. We don't want to lose a vision of an awesome God. Great, mighty in works and deeds. At the same time, a God who is gracious, who comes to your side who knows everything about you, who would not leave you nor forsake you, catch a glimpse of the grace of God as it's revealed through that rainbow emblem upon the throne. Praise God. Praise God. Hmm. My friend, let me ask you, are you going through a stormy season in your life? Praise God. Job lost everything when the first storm hit him. When God came to him in a whirlwind and started talking to him, have you ever imagined what went through his mind as he saw another whirlwind coming by him? Praise God. Hallelujah. Where are you this morning? Do you feel hopelessness filling in you? Do you hear whispering in your ears saying, 
everything is lost. There is no point in continuing in faith. Do you hear whispering in your ears that says, you cannot make it, nothing's going to change, your status would not change, your situation would not change, everything is doomed. I want to assure you through God's word, praise God, hallelujah, that God will not leave you high and dry. Praise God. Maybe you're seated by the river Kebar. Praise God. If you continue to look to him, heavens will open for you. Praise God. If you continue to seek his face, you will hear God speak into your situation. If you continue to linger in his presence, you will hear and you will envision the Lord coming by your side and getting you out of the land. Praise God. All eyes closed. When all eyes are closed, we're going to pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Praise. Is hopelessness creeping into your life? Maybe it's a terminal sickness. Maybe it's a spouse that does not want to hold to the covenant that is made. Maybe it's a child that continues to rebel. Maybe it's a taste of failure in your mouth. The storm continues to brew through your life as it does this morning. We want to present to you hope and grace that comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe you will have to go through the storm to see the rainbow that the Lord has. Maybe in the midst of the storm, he will show you that rainbow. Away before you go through the storm, he will show you the rainbow for you. Praise God. Come to him. Lean on to him. Become people who will evoke the presence of God. Become people who would cause heaven's door be flung wide open for you. Praise God. Heaven wants to bless you with his presence, with his power, with his provision. Amen. Would you open your heart for him to work in and through your life. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We yield our lives to you, Father. Father, we pray as we go through the stormy seasons of our lives, we will see a God who is close by us, who is near to us, who abides with us. Hallelujah. And continue to lean on to him, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to catch a glimpse of the reality, Lord, that our God is an awesome God, that our God is a holy God who wants his people to be holy. Praise God. Help us to see how gracious the Lord is that you allow us to approach you, hallelujah, sprinkled by the blood of Jesus, that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace and call you above, Father. Thank you for the access. Help us to understand the supremacy and the excellency of our God. At the same time, help us to understand the proximity of our God, how close, how near you are to deliver us, to redeem us, to set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Folks, as we sing a song, we will prepare ourselves for the taking. Hallelujah.